Hi everybody, this is a video introducing you to the class and saying welcome to the class. And if you're watching this video, obviously you're in research methods in psychology. And this is obviously a summer class and we have eight weeks, so it's about half the time of a typical semester class. So my name is uh, Kevin Carlson, so I'm the instructor there. Made it a little bit bigger. I'm going to actually make it a little bit smaller now. And so uh, you can call me various things. You can call me Kevin. So there, there's no problem with that. So you can call me Kevin. Uh, or if you use my last name, uh, use the correct title. So it's uh, either Professor Carlson or Dr. Carlson, not Mr. So don't say Mr. Say Dr. Carlson or Professor Carlson, but I don't really care about the the titles per se, just use the correct ones because you can just call me Kevin. And then some people like to have a mixture of the formal and informal, so if you want you can call me Dr. Kevin or Professor Kevin, either of those is fine also. And there's my email. Uh, there's a phone number there, but since I don't really have an office on campus, that phone number uh, is not necessarily used very much, so email is the best way to contact me. And if you kind of want to get to know me a little bit more personally, get to know your classmates more personally, uh, there is a weekly check-in session, which is optional because uh, I know that not everybody's schedule would allow this, but there's a weekly check-in session on Tuesday, so every Tuesday at 3 p.m. on Zoom. So you're welcome to come. You can ask any questions that you have about the class. During the weeks that we have exams, you can ask questions about the exam material. Or simply, you can just get to know other people. So it's actually quite nice to get to know other people. Uh, so the weekly check-in sessions, Tuesday, 3 o'clock on Zoom. The link is there. And as it says there, everybody is welcome to come to that. And before we get any further along in the syllabus, I just sort of want to introduce myself real quickly. So just a little bit of my own sort of educational background is uh, high school. I almost flunked out of ninth grade. Uh, and then there was a transition to getting A's as a senior. And so I went from, really I probably should have flunked because of my grades in the ninth grade, uh, but they didn't flunk me. Um, and then I got pretty much straight A's as a senior. And while I was in high school, uh, I grew up, you know, I was a poor kid, um, so government housing all the time, food stamps all the time, uh, sometimes on welfare, and very clearly in my school, uh, you knew who was richer and who was poorer. They had numbers for us. They had numbers one, two, and three. You could see it on your registration. You could see it on your report cards, all of these things. Any document that the school had had one, two, and three. One were the good kids, the A kids, the, the ones that they expected to do well. Uh, twos were sort of average, um, a lot of, I guess, middle class kids. And then threes were the kids that weren't gifted or not good in school, according to them. And big surprise, guess who was oh, threes? Threes were uh, all the poor kids. And so um, it had absolutely nothing to do with academic ability. It had everything to do with uh, social class. And money uh, and so I'd say that I was a 2.9 uh, officially I was a 2 but the two level classes I were in were pretty horrible uh, and what sort of happened to me in high school was I took a class and sometimes good teachers change your life and sometimes bad teachers change your life and so I had a class can't remember if it was ninth or tenth grade I think it was tenth grade actually and this class was a definitely a 2.9 class, and the teacher had basically given up. This was somebody who was a horrible teacher. He should have been fired. He he had given up on teaching. 
and he was an English literature teacher. And what he would do every single class is he would show a movie. So people would come in, he would have a, you know, set up for the movie on a television. He literally would just push a button, play the movie, and he'd sit behind his desk and read some book or something like that, or at least pretend to read a book. And taught, never taught, never said anything hardly to class. Uh, and so what happened in that class is that everybody went wild. So people were basically throwing chairs, throwing desk, moving desk all over the place, uh, ransacking the cupboards, finding, trying to find stuff, just basically um, causing trouble. And the teacher never did anything. Um, and not that I was against causing trouble, it's just that it doesn't count if the teacher lets you. And so... I was like, this is this is stupid. People are just acting stupid, and the teacher doesn't care. And I just had to get out of there because it was it was not fun to be allowed to break rules. It's fun to break rules only if you're not allowed to, right? That's a, that's one where rules are. So there was no rules in the classroom. And actually, I had a a friend who had another English literature class at the same time, the same class period, and uh, the teacher knew me, and she let me in it. And actually, it was a college prep class. It was a number one class. Uh, but because the teacher allowed me to go in, I was able to go into that class. And that basically kind of changed my life. Uh, then from then on, I, I had all sort of college prep classes. Uh, so it was probably, in some ways, um, some good dumb luck there uh, that made that transformation for me. And, um, you know, being from my situation, uh, I didn't really consider going to various colleges or universities. I kind of slipped into the community college in my hometown. And so I went to a community college. So I was a community college student also. And I got my associate's degree there. And then I transferred. I should probably say at the community college, the community college also changed my life. So it was sort of the that teacher, but still... Coming out of high school, I didn't really have any guidance in terms of going to college. In fact, I remember the so-called so-called guidance counselor, and they were forced to see us once a year. I remember going into the guidance counselor and um, given a vague idea that I wanted to go to college and maybe to the community college, and he was okay, sure. He saw me for maybe two minutes, and he, you know, definitely from my file and from how I was dressed, he knew I was a poor kid. And he couldn't, just to be quite frank, he couldn't give a crap about what happened to me. So I never really got any guidance, and so I kind of, what I consider sort of slipped into community college. But that also changed my life. So I think if I would have went to a four-year college, I think I would have been, right away, I would have been, um, you know, sort of uh, lost and maybe frustrated and... Um, maybe wouldn't have gotten the resources I I would have gotten at the community college. And so at the community college, we had small classes, and um, I wasn't very strong academically. Uh, so I, I do remember one of my teachers my first year, I think it was first semester in community college, I had to take a writing class, which I'm sure that you're familiar with also. And in that writing class, I wrote a paper, and I actually was kind of proud of it. I was like, oh, this is a really interesting paper. And I got the paper back and it said, um, this paper's atrocious. And given my background, I didn't know what atrocious meant, so I had to look it up. And after I looked it up, I was like, oh, wow. But as bad as that sounds, um, the teacher actually took a lot of time. The teacher spent probably an hour or two going over the paper with me in person and how to correct the various things that needed to be corrected. And so she invested a lot of time in helping me. And I found a number of professors like that in my community college. And so probably the community college was a good fit for me because I was not really well prepared for um, college, even though I had taken those college level classes. Um, and it was good to get that guidance in the community college. Then I transferred to a four-year state university. So I, I'm from Wisconsin, so there's snow there. Uh, so I transferred there, and then I ended up 
um, going to grad school. So initially I got my master's in developmental psychology. This is uh, Cornell University. Got my master's there. And I ended up getting my PhD in developmental psychology. So that's, to me, it's quite a journey from almost flunking out of ninth grade to um, getting the PhD. So uh, that's my educational journey. And in terms of my, my work experience, I sort of have half and half. I sort of roughly half my work experiences as a teacher and half of my experiences um, in educational settings doing research and statistical analyses. And so uh, part of what I'll talk about in this class is the avenues, the employment avenues that open up if you're good at statistics and good at research. And so I talk about this a bit more at the end of lecture one, uh, but I talk about how if you sort of do well in this class and uh, can do research, uh, understand research methods and understand statistics and how to do statistics, that opens up a lot of doors for you in terms of your employment. So um, I don't know if I'm going to go through all of this, but I, this was the first place I taught. This is in Rhodes College in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, and then after that, I actually I went into research and doing statistics. And so uh, one of the things I did is I went to Asia. So this is Singapore. And what I'll say is that I would never have been able to go to Asia otherwise, being a poor kid. Um, I, I would never be able to afford to travel over there. I'd be probably quite old by the time I could afford that. Uh, so actually knowing statistics, knowing research methods open up the door for me to explore different places, um, in this case, Asia. So having those skills, statistics, research, not only opens doors in America, but also allows you to go internationally quite easily. I'd say even more than um, things like teaching or knowing the content of your studies um, is if you know statistics and research, that, tr that stuff is the same anywhere. Anywhere in the world, statistics is the same. So I was able to go to Singapore. I lived there for seven and a half years. Uh, that's a picture of Singapore. And then uh, from Singapore, I went to Hong Kong and I, I lived and worked in Hong Kong and for four and a half years. Uh, again, doing some uh, research, so research methods and statistical analyses in uh, educational settings, so at a university there in Hong Kong. And then I, I came back to America, and being in America, I've, I've taught at various places. So this is Scripps College I taught there. I was a research analyst at various community colleges like Moore Park College, Norco College. And then I was able to teach um, at Chafee College, obviously. So um, that's a fairly lengthy um, introduction to myself. But part of that introduction is to sort of let you know my own background, that I started out as a community college student, that I struggled in my studies. Um, in fact, I sort of struggled with math. I was afraid to, to do math when I was in high school. I think I took only one math course in high school. Uh, and I only took math courses that I was forced to in undergraduate school. But what I'll say is, looking back uh, at that, I wish I would have did it earlier. So it was only in grad school that I learned research methods and statistics. And that stuff really opened up the world to me. So not, not only in terms of employment, but also, also being able to live in places like Hong Kong and Singapore. So again, I hope that this class, because you're probably taking this class because you have to, it's not because you want to, but I hope that this class gives you some perspectives and skills that you can actually use in your real life and can help you do some of the same things it's helped me do. So enough about me. So let's get into the class more extensively. So obviously you should look at Canvas, and I think I have the Canvas page up here. So I suggest that when you look at our class that you look at the module view. Uh, that should be the home view for you. Uh, but look at modules. I know that sometimes I see that students look in the files. Uh, that to me seems very um, awkward and there's a lot of files you have to kind of dig through. So if you look at the module view, it actually will give you things that 
um, will go in order. So if you just kind of follow the module view, it will show you what things to do, what progression you should take in class. So if we look at the modules, we have uh, a toolkit. So different resources that are available for you on campus and also a toolkit for Canvas is right here, the first link. There's this welcome to the class. And so you're watching the video here. Uh, in the welcome to class, there's the communication plan. So how we'll keep in touch. And also the syllabus. So if you want to download or look at the syllabus, it's there. And we'll talk about this a little bit later too, but um, the first module after that is lab exercise one. It's important to, to do lab exercise one before Thursday, this Thursday. Uh, so there's a video here. So watch the video for lab exercise one and then complete lab exercise one by Thursday. Uh, lab exercise one has various questions, but one of the things you're going to be doing is uh, thinking about your research project, which I'll talk about a little bit later when we get into the syllabus a little bit more. And then what we'll do is for each week, we'll have the lectures, we'll have the assignments for each of the weeks. So right now there's lecture one is on week number one. I will add lecture two and other things um, at least by Tuesday uh, so you can go further. But lab exercise one is the first thing to do for this class. And in uh, each of the weeks, there are videos that you can get direct links here. So if you actually just click this, maybe I'll do it this way, open a new tab, you'll actually have a video. So you can watch the video right here. Uh, for those who want captions, I will also post links to YouTube versions of the video. Um, so uh, don't sort of mix those up because the YouTube version uh, the video is the same as the direct links right here. So those YouTube versions are duplicates of these videos. Um, they're for the people that want to use the caption to help them uh, study. And then what we'll do also is that we'll have PowerPoints for each of the lectures. Uh, so you have the PowerPoint and the video. And if you have a keen eye, you can just you can see that I've just uploaded the PowerPoint for lecture one. Uh, so you can you can download the PowerPoint and have that open while you watch the video lecture to help you take notes. So that's how Canvas will be structured. If you don't know how to use Canvas, um, take some time to learn how to use it. It's very important um, because everything that we're going to be using in class is on Canvas. And so in terms of our textbook, we're using a free textbook. So this textbook is an open textbook. You can go to this website right here. Here's the link. You can read it online. That's what I do. I just simply read it online. Uh, you can also download it as a PDF, for example, and that is all free. If you want, there are some print copies. Um, they might be available at the campus store. Uh, for a price, of course, you have to pay a bit for it. I would call them first to check before you go out there. Also, you can get a print copy from Amazon. Um, there's a link at this web page uh, to the Amazon link. It's $12 for a new paperback. But again, the physical copies are not, the print copies are not required. You can fully read the stuff online um, or as a PDF for free. So email, make sure to check your email and to check the Canvas announcements. There's um, a lot of important information that gets conveyed through Canvas announcements and through emails. And um, I will not reply to emails from not Chafee sources um, because basically there's privacy laws. And so if you email me from a non Chafee source, it could be somebody else. It could be your parents or your spouse or something like that trying to check up on how you're doing. And so we're not supposed to reply to uh, non Chafee emails. Um, so you have your Chafee email. It's the password has been set up by you. If you share it with people, that's your fault. Um, but if somebody creates a name 
on Gmail, for example, and emails me and I give information about you on it, and it's not you, that's my fault. Um, so please write me from your Chafee email. So I'm not going to go over all of the details of the syllabus, obviously. So you can read the course description, the learning outcomes, the various objectives of the course. You can read through those. You can look at the important dates for um, adding. You, if you're seeing this on Canvas, you've already added. Uh, but the drop dates. But let's get into sort of the nitty-gritty of the, of the class. And so things like assignments. And so... Uh, make sure to submit your assignments on time. All the due dates and time will be posted on Canvas. Uh, by the way, don't assume a time of 11.59. Uh, there can be other times that something is due, so these things are always available on Canvas. Um, there is a late penalty for work. That's all specified there. And so this is a lab class. So we have a lab class, and so we're going to have some lab exercises. So roughly right now we have seven lab exercises planned. So seven of the eight weeks of our class, so there's going to be lab exercises. Actually, I shouldn't say that because there's some weeks where we don't have any lab exercises, and there's some weeks where we have two lab exercises. So I'll, I'll, I should scrub that. It's not seven of eight weeks. We just have seven lab exercises. Some weeks, like this week, we have just one. Other weeks, we have two, and some weeks, we don't have uh, any uh, because you are having things like exams or you have um, papers to work on. And those lab exercises are 10 points each. Uh, the first sort of big uh, assignment you're going to be doing is an annotated bibliography. We're going to talk about this a little bit later, but basically this is going to be the start of your literature review. Um, so as part of the course, you're going to be doing some research, and as part of that research, you're going to be reading the literature out there, so reading previous research, um, so articles examining the topic that you're interested in for class. So we'll talk more about this. Um, actually later this week. So later this week, I'll post the details of the annotated bibliography. You can start thinking about it. You can start working on it if you want to. Uh, and again, the details of that assignment will be posted on Canvas. And then we're going to have three non-cumulative exams. So each exam is going to have um, the material since the last exam. And these exams occur pretty early, so I think the three exams, I believe we might be finished with it by week five or six. Uh, the last part of class is we're going to be working on a paper. And so the exams will be done um, quite early in the class. Uh, there's not going to be any late, late exams or final exams here. So a big part of this class is Sorry about this delay. I have bugs flying into my uh, screen here. Uh, so uh, a big part of this class is doing. <laughs> sorry about that. Doing research. Um, and so normally, what you'd be doing is you would be designing and conducting your own research study, collecting data, working in groups, analyzing those data, writing a paper about that. Uh, we're going to be doing it a little bit differently since we're online. Since we're fully online, it's hard to work in groups. I don't know if you've tried to work in groups when you're just fully online, you're not meeting in person. It's really difficult. So um, we're not going to rely on the groups so much to do research. Um, also, this is an eight-week class, so we don't have a lot of time. So if we tried to do this online and the process doesn't work well, it's going to cause a lot of problems. And so we're going to we're going to address this in a couple ways. So in terms of designing your own studies, we're going to be doing that through lab exercises. So in some of the lab exercises, you're going to be asked to do things that would be part of designing a study, including designing some methodology. And you'll be doing that as a lab exercise, as lab exercises, I should say. And so 
And that way you're going to be learning those skills, but we're not going to be doing it as part of your research project because, again, summer and online, it would be difficult to do. So you're going to learn some of those skills through lab exercises. And in terms of your own research project, you're going to be doing a research project where you're going to be selecting your own research questions that you want to examine. And you're going to answer those research questions with data that has already been collected. And so actually lab exercise one of that video, you're going to be watching me summarize four studies that you can choose from. So four data sets. So uh, the data sets that I go over in the video, so they have quite a bit, at least three of them have a lot of stuff in it. So you're not going to do all of it. You're just going to choose two or three research questions that you want to do for your study. And so you'll choose two or three research questions that you can answer with one of the data sets. You're going to be doing the same thing as you would be doing as a regular research project. You're going to select your, identify your research questions. You're going to be doing a literature review related to those research questions. Based on that literature review, you're going to come up with hypotheses. And you're going to think about how that stuff is going to be measured in the data that we have. We'll work on this as we go through in the semester. The data is already there. So once that you have your methods and your statistics chosen, we can analyze the data, and then you analyze the data, and then you interpret your data, and then that all turns into your paper. So that whole research project of defining your research questions, doing your literature review, specifying your hypotheses, specifying your methodology, selecting the right, the appropriate statistics, running those statistics, interpreting the findings from the statistics. All that stuff is going to be represented in your paper. So you will be doing a research project. It's just that the data are already available. So we don't have to worry about anything messing up. There won't be any mess ups. We have the data already. We don't have to worry about it. So that research project that I just mentioned, you're going to be doing two paper drafts during the semester. And the idea of the paper drafts is to take you towards the final paper. So a big uh, key to this class is to keep on working. Uh, yes, it is a lab class and uh, it's an eight week class, so it's going to be a bit demanding in terms of time. But you're going to be fine as long as you chip away. If you keep on working on the lab exercises, on the paper drafts, you're going to be fine at the end of the semester. So the paper drafts are intended for you to develop your final paper before the last week's class. So we're not going to be rushing at the last minute, oh my gosh, we've got to finish this paper. We're going to be taking steps throughout the semester to develop your final paper. The final paper is essentially, I'd consider that almost the final exam. That's your big thing. Um, so your final paper will be a uh, APA style paper on your research project, as I just mentioned. I mentioned earlier that getting into groups is, is difficult. I'm going to try to pair you with people. I'm going to try to get you into small research groups that will help you along with the project. Um, if it works out, that's great. If the groups don't work out so well, we can work around it. So we're not fully dependent on the groups, but we're going to try it. Uh, and so part of what I'm going to be doing is seeing if people have similar interests as you and also seeing if they're available at the same time as you. If there are, I'll match people up and they can work a bit in groups. If not, it's no big deal. And then uh, along with the final paper, you'll be doing a poster presentation. Uh, if you have a group, you can do the poster presentation as a group. If you're not in a group, you can simply do the poster pr presentation on your own. And the poster presentation will be a video, so you'll create a video. Uh, if you don't know how to produce videos, I suggest that you learn soon. Uh, I think a lot of you know how to produce videos. If you don't know how to produce videos, you might want to try 
uh, this thing that I actually use myself, which is called Loom with an L. So L-O-O-M. It's free. You can create videos pretty easily, um, but you don't necessarily have to use Loom. It's, it's up to you how you want to do the, the video. And again, we'll talk about these things in, as we go closer to each of the assignments. Here's the total points. Uh, sometimes people ask me, um, what if? So if you're at the end and you're thinking, well, uh, what if I get a B on my paper? What would that do for my final grade? Uh, so these sort of what if questions um, is displayed here in this video. So you can watch this video and see how you can check that what if. Here's the grading scale. If you have accommodations, uh, please check in with me. So uh, before each exam, you should check in with me for your exam accommodations. If you think you uh, uh, sh should have accommodations but you don't have it listed or you haven't done it yet, uh, please go to the DP DPS office. I cannot give accommodations. I can't, for example, give extra time for people just because they say to me that they need it. Uh, it has to be documented. So if you think that you should get extra time on exams and things like that, check with the DPS office to get this documented. Academic integrity. Just go ahead and read that. Uh, what I'll say is a big thing in terms of exams is don't cheat on exams. <laughs> and so I know that once in a while uh, with online exams, people like to use inappropriately the, the Internet to find answers. And to me, ever since we've gone fully online uh, on Chafee, it seems like there's always one or two people that do this each semester. And they get caught. And what happens is you get caught, you get a zero on the exam. And so um, don't do that because I've, I've had people recently who failed the class mainly because they, they cheated on one or two questions on the exam. Um, if you don't know the answer, take a zero. Uh, losing 5, 10, 15 points for a question is not that bad. Getting a zero out of 100 is pretty bad. Um, so make sure that you um, aren't plagiarizing or aren't inappropriately using um, various online sources to help you on exams. So this is an important thing to read just because I want to make sure that you have a clear expectation for this course. And so uh, this class because it's a lab class and a summer class. If we were meeting actually in person, we would be meeting four times a week for almost three hours each time. So that's a lot of time together, right? So we're fully online um, and then we have, you know, assignments and papers that you're going to be doing. So I would say that you should expect on average to spend about 20 hours a week on this class because it is a lab class and it is a summer class where we're going twice as fast as a semester class. So you have to do twice as much work each week versus a regular semester course. So keep that in mind. And I would definitely recommend that you work early in the week. So work early in the week. Uh, I'll try to post things a bit ahead of time. So if you want to work a bit ahead, that's OK, too. Uh, but work early in the week so that you're not rushing at the last minute. So I've been teaching online classes for quite a bit now since we've been fully online. And I typically teach statistics. And um, statistics is similar to this. It has a similar sort of time requirement because it's a, it's a lab course. And so in that statistics class, what I'll say is probably the number one thing related to uh, how good a person does in that class is that is whether they work early or not. So people who work early in the week do much better and are by far less stressed out than those people who do it late. Um, and I'll give you an example from this last semester, actually, in my stats class. I had somebody who uh, basically, so we have we had all the stuff that was on that we needed on Monday um, for the class. 
and there was a stuff that was due. I think there was a homework. I don't know if there's a lab due, but there was at least a homework that was due on Sunday. So this person, I, and I was able to track things, and so this person didn't do anything until Sunday afternoon, about, you know, about six hours before the, the homework was due. And they emailed me, and they, they basically said, I don't understand anything, and I don't know how to do the homework. And I was like, this is not a great time to ask six hours before it's due on a Sunday. Um, so work ahead. Don't put pressure on yourself. Work ahead. Get things done early. If you get everything done early, then you can relax a bit. So uh, make sure that you budget time for this course, because it will take time. You have to watch the video lectures. You have to do the, the lab assignments. You have to work on your research projects. So please take the time and start early each week. Uh, let me know how, how things are going. So if there's things that you're concerned about, let me know. Uh, those check-in sessions on Tuesday are a great time for you to share how things are going or how things can be improved. And then finally, in the syllabus here, we can talk about the, the class schedule. Uh, so remember that there's quite a bit we have to do each week. We're doing twice as much as a normal semester class. And so each week we have the different topics. And so for this week, uh, I have lab exercise one, if you remember Canvas over here. We have lab exercise one, the stuff that you need for that's up. And then I have the lecture number one up. Uh, I will post lecture number two um, at least by Tuesday. And then uh, the stuff about doing a lit review, I'll post by um, midweek or so, because um, that's something that you'll need to work on your annotated bibliography. And so the readings are here. Uh, the book uses Roman numerals. Assignments are over here. Uh, these are tentative times, so I try, I'm going to try to stick to these due dates and times, but they can change. So the official due dates and times are on Canvas. I just want to highlight that, especially early on, um, we're going to have exams pretty quickly. So our first exam is next week, and it's going to be due on uh, Wednesday. And actually, I'll have to think a little bit about that schedule. But right now, it's going to be due on Wednesday. Uh, the reason why I want to have it due on Wednesday is to make sure that uh, you have time to do the, the annotated bibliography. So we're going to have assignments due uh, in the middle of the week so that you're able to do things in a timely fashion and not rushing things at the end. Um, so we have exam one next week. And you'll see here is that I'll list the chapters. So exam one is chapters one, two, and three, and the lectures that go with it. And uh, here I have a marker, and I say that, well, here's the end of exam one material. So when you see that, it means the stuff that comes after it is on exam two. Again, uh, later in this week, I'll, I'll post information about the annotated bibliography. That's actually the first step of your research project in terms of doing a lit review for it. That's going to help you accomplish that. So I'll post more information about that at the end of the week. And then you'll see in uh, week three, we have a couple lab exercises, and then we have an exam that's due. Uh, so for that exam, we have uh, four chapters on exam two. So we move relatively fast in terms of the material. So this is why you want to put in those 20 hours and to put them in early in the week if you can. Week four, so uh, we're getting to halfway through the summer here. Uh, by the Towards the end of that week, you're going to be doing a draft of uh, the first part of your paper. And so week four and week five, we're going to be wrapping up the reading materials, the lab exercises, uh, so things that you'll need for exam three. You'll see here is exam three. We'll be finished with our exams by week number five. And then when we get to week six, we're going to get into the last part of your research paper. So 
by the end of week four, you're going to have your introduction, the first part of your research project. Um, during week five, I'm going to have you do some lab exercises to help you develop your research methods part of your paper. That's the second part. And then in week six, I'm going to help you in terms of planning your statistics. So we'll review the stats. We'll have you plan your statistical analyses for your project. And we'll be doing that through a uh, lab exercise, lab exercise six. And then we're going to be working on writing up the results. Writing up the results of your statistics is going to be relatively easy if you remember your statistics class. So in your statistics class, you should have been taught how to write up the findings of your stats in APA style. And then when we get to week number seven, we're going to start working on finishing up your paper. So looking at your statistical findings from week number six, how do you make sense of those things? How do you interpret those findings? And then we'll be writing the last part of the paper in week number seven. You'll have a full draft of your full paper due by the end of that week. And then the final week of class is you're going to be working on your poster and you're going to be finalizing your paper. So it, it moves faster, obviously, in the summer, but you can see here, I hope you can see that we have sort of a step-by-step -step thing. So the assignments that you're going to be doing, the lab exercises, etc., those are all built in to help you do your research project finish your final paper in a step-by-step -step fashion so you're not feeling stressed out, you're not feeling rushed at the end. And then uh, the syllabus is supposed to have resources for you. The resources are posted on Canvas. I'll just show it quickly again. It's posted right here. So that's basically an introduction to our class. It's a lengthy introduction, but I want you to sort of realize what the class is about how to approach the class so that you're not stressed out about it. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. And hopefully I'll see you on uh, Tuesday sometimes during our check-in sessions. Uh, so take care, and hopefully I'll see you in person in Zoom sessions.